What's up, New Hope family? Good to see you all. Welcome to my house for this Sunday night. A little snippet of what God's kind of speaking to me. I know this morning, Pastor Weaver hyped it up big time. Uh, and so I'm hoping that it just touches your heart and the Holy Spirit fills where you're at. Um, I know for me during this quarantine time, even though life seems to always be busy and hurried, I know that I've found that I've had certain times that I've been able to think a little bit more. I've let my thoughts run. Um, I've been able to sit kind of in quiet. And I think that's something we really miss now in this culture. There's so much noise. There's so much distraction. There's so much, you know, dopamine releases with everything that's flashing in front of us through the thousands of ads we get a day to the thousands of messages and notifications and whatever it may be. And so I think there's a lost art to just really thinking and using your brain, which is funny to hear you say or hear me say that, but it really is. And But what I found is, have you ever just been maybe like a shower type of thought? We call them deep thoughts or stay woke thoughts we tell our students and it's kind of out of left field and you're like, where did that come from? I have those all the time. Some of them are weird. Some of them are hilarious. Some of them are super deep and change the perspective that I have on things and I know my mind runs sometimes. Sometimes I know that those thoughts aren't necessarily just weird or funny but they're also can be pretty bad, can be pretty sinful and I know things coming out of my heart can be sinful sometimes and even cause me to go why why did I think that? Why why did I why did I let that run in my head? How, where did that come from? And it's pretty discouraging sometimes. You think, man, as a pastor, as a Christian, as a Christ follower, I shouldn't be thinking that. Where did that thought come from? Am I, am I just some broken, you know, messed up, kind of sick in the head? Is, it, is something twisted in me? Or what's going on here? And, and it can kind of be discouraging to have those sometimes. And I know once I have those thoughts, it changes how I feel. And ultimately then changes how I act. If you think about the mind and how powerful our thought life is, it really changes every aspect of not just what we do, but of who we are. And if you think about it this way, and what, uh, what I do and what I feel comes from what I think. Everything that I do, everything that I feel comes from what I think. There's a source there. It's not just all reactionary. If you think about it this way, if I were to give you an example, if I were, you know, very fearful and thinking these thoughts of big what ifs with coronavirus, maybe it has to do with my wife being a nurse on the front lines and I start to think and I let those thoughts run and those scenarios play out, well, it doesn't just stop with a thought because I've thought about it, then it turns into fear and I start feeling anxious and worried and fearful but it never stops at a feeling, it always moves into action and then I start to act afraid, I act out irrationally, I may make decisions based off of fear and worry. And that all just stems back to just because I thought a certain way, I chose to think about something. And really, whatever I think about has a lot of power over me and over my life. Whatever I choose to think about, if you Think about it this way, it's really I'm putting that thought on the throne of my life, on the throne of my mind. I'm letting that thought rule because that thought's going to cause me to feel a certain way and then to act a certain way. And so I have a choice really, what am I letting rule in my mind, thus ruling my life? What are you let, letting rule your mind and your life? Have you ever thought about that before? What's ruling in your thoughts? Who's on the throne of your mind? Well, I know the Bible talks about this in Colossians 3.15. It says, let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. I love that picture there. Let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. I know that in scripture, especially in this verse, that that word hearts there is, is interchangeable with mind and thoughts and feelings. So think of that word in that kind of context. Let the peace that comes from Christ rule your mind 
Your feelings and your thoughts rule in your heart. This tells me, this verse tells me that something can rule my thoughts. Something has lordship over my thoughts and my feelings and my life. Something is ruling currently over my thoughts and your thoughts right now. I wonder what that is or what that looks like. It also tells me that if, if something is ruling over my mind, it's ruling over everything. And so there's such a high value on the mind in your thought life. The scriptures and Jesus himself talks a lot about this and I could go into it for a long time, but I want to present this to you. Why is our thought life so important to figure out what we let rule over it? Think of Satan and who he is. He's the father of lies. His greatest and most used tactic against us are lies. They're thoughts. He attacks our thoughts. That's not a coincidence because he knows if I can, I, I don't have to attack them physically because if I attack their thoughts, they'll attack themselves. I don't have to destroy them physically, Satan says, because if I can control their thoughts, we destroy ourselves. So Satan knows there's a high value on how we think, what we think. Because our thoughts turn into desires, and desires turn into actions. So we need to recognize this, that there's power in what we're thinking. And we need to let peace rule. See, we get to choose who's on the throne of our minds. Or who is on the throne of our minds. We get to choose that. Who is in charge? Am I, I believing Satan's lies to be in charge of my whole life? even down to my identity? Am I letting the influences of all social media, movies, music, books, people, am I letting those rule in my thought life? Or do I let peace that comes from Christ? Do I let Christ himself? Or it could be worry, anxiety, lust, Anger, fear, envy, comparison, doubt can rule the throne of your mind and your life. And I know, for me, I could get so discouraged with this verse that says, Take every thought captive. It's 2 Corinthians 10.5. Take your thoughts captive and make them obedient to Christ. And I think of my own life and I think of, man, this, this thought from right field, I wasn't even thinking about it and it just popped in and now I'm, I'm feeling broken and sick and twisted and it changes everything about me. Why would I even think, why would I even go there? How could I even think that? I'm such a sinner. But that verse wasn't meant to condemn I believe it was meant to illuminate because if you think about it this way, if the scripture if Paul is telling us to take thoughts captive, he is alluding to the fact that there are thoughts running wild. Not in our control. He's alluding to the fact that there are thoughts that are deviant, there are thoughts that are foreign, that are rebellious from us. So it tells me not every thought that I have is from me. It means I have things that need to be taken into custody in my mind, that there's a battle in my mind for what I think about, and some things need to be arrested and made obedient to Christ. I need to let Him rule on what I think. But sometimes we don't take those things captive. We don't take those thoughts captive and we let them rule. Once again, it doesn't have to be necessarily lust. It could be doubt, fear, anger, like I said. And we let those thoughts rule, and we think they're true, and we think they're from us. I thought it, it must be from me. But let me encourage you tonight that there's a difference in thinking something and thinking about something. That's so important for you to grasp. If you're going to forget everything I said, don't forget this. There is a difference between thinking something and thinking about something. Thinking it or 
choosing to think about it. There's, there's a big difference there and this will set us free because just thinking something doesn't make it rule our lives. But I have to choose when something comes into my mind, good, bad, or ugly, I have to choose that thought to think about such things to make them rule in my thought life, thus ruling my feelings and my actions. I have to choose it. I have to allow it to stay and let it unfold. And so there really is a battle going on in your mind for your thoughts, for what you think about, and for who and what is going to rule, who's going to sit on the throne of your thoughts. And so there's three ways that I want to encourage you quickly on how you can win this battle of your mind and of your thoughts. The first one is just because you thought it doesn't mean it's true. Just because you thought it doesn't mean it's true. See, in culture, where the world where we're at today, they would say, if you thought it, it's true and it's from you. And therefore, because you thought it, it has to be true. And if it's your truth, you have to follow it. Oh, and because you thought it, you felt a certain way. You always follow your feelings. You can't avoid it if you're feeling not in your own skin, I have to follow that feeling regardless of what it'll do to me. That's what the world says about us, but that's not what we know to be true. That if Paul is saying there's thoughts that are running wild, that doesn't mean they're from me. If I know that, that, that Satan can influence my thoughts, that he can lie to me, that those lies don't come from me, they come from Satan. See, our thoughts, things that we think about, they come from three different sources. First is Satan. We know he's the father of lies. All he does is lie. He's not creative. He can't create new. He just twists. He just twists things and makes counterfeit of God's word. The second thing is from me, in a sense of what am I consuming? What, what am I consuming? I know that garbage, we tell our students garbage in, garbage out. Garbage in, garbage thought. Netflix, movies, media, culture, celebrities, negative influences of our friends, whatever we put ourselves around, it doesn't just bounce off of us. It gets into our thought life and things can flow up. I know just our sinful nature, as Paul talks about in our sinful nature, that things come and they flow up with, from within and so my sinful nature is speaking to me sometimes. And it's not something that I choose to think, then it just pops in. I know the third thing is God. It comes from God. There's truth that God places in us. He speaks to us every single day, every moment of, of the day. He's speaking to us. He's speaking to us through His written word that is truth, that is authoritative. And I have to listen to those things. I could choose, but I know that I... I shouldn't be listening to two out of those three things. Two out of those three sources I don't want to think about. And just because you think something doesn't mean you have to think about something. That's why we know that it, Jesus says the truth will set you free. It'll set you free from a lot of negative feelings and emotions. And it'll set you free from a lot of actions. A lot of sinful actions. A lot of regretful things that we choose to do. If we could dial it back and control our thoughts. The second thing is to think about what you're thinking about. Think about what you are thinking about. Our brains are so amazing and so complex and they work lightning fast. Thinking something and thinking about something is lightning fast of a process. So times I, I know that we believe that our brains and thoughts, they're just reactions. They're happening so quick, I'm just reacting to content. But that's not the case. Because our brains are working so fast, we are still making that choice. It's just happening really fast. And so I know I need to slow down. I need to take a step back and go, huh, what am I thinking about right now? Okay, this just came in from left field to right field. What, where did that come from? Why am I thinking that right now? And is it foreign, is it lie, or is it truth? Is it from my own sinful nature, or is it from God? I need to slow that process down. We can do that. You can do that. You can think about what you're thinking about. It's so healthy to do that. 
and thinking about what's going on in your mind. It will help explain a lot of emotions. It will help explain a lot of actions when you think about what you're thinking about. And if you had a negative emotion or negative action that you took, I guarantee you you can think about that and go and retrace all the way back to a thought that you chose to think instead of saying, what is going on? What am I putting on the throne of my thoughts and my feelings? The last thing, and this one is the most important. Don't just resist a thought, replace a thought. I want to illustrate this for you wherever you're at watching this. Take just a moment, unless you're driving, which you shouldn't be watching a video anyways. Hello. But take a moment and just close your eyes. And with your eyes closed, I don't want you to think about ice cream. Don't think about a beautiful swirl cone, the crunch of it. Don't think about cold stone and taking a big bite and getting a huge chunk of cookie dough. Don't think about the cold on your tongue on a warm day. Don't think about ice cream. Don't think about the taste. Don't think about it. The more you can open your eyes, the more you try to resist Oh, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to go into a mental fetal position and I'm going to, my mind is going to stay flexed and, and the thought is just going to beat against me and I'm going to resist, resist, resist and hopefully it'll go away. That's not how our brains work and that's not how God designed us. You, can, you can't just resist the thought. You have to replace a thought. In order to get the bad out, I have to put the good in. I have to get it out of there. I have to push it off the couch of your mind. Get it out, but it doesn't just happen by resisting. You have to replace. You have to replace. I get the lie out of my brain because I speak and I believe and I think the truth about that lie. Psalm 119.11 I have hidden your word in my heart, mind, feelings, that I might not sin against you. There is a direct correlation in Scripture in scripture that backs up science that would say what you think about is going to turn into a feeling and then it's going to turn into a thought. I've hidden your word in my thoughts, in my heart, that I might not sin against you. There's a direct correlation between what you're thinking and how you're acting. And the psalmist is saying here, if I would just hide the truth, the good, the beautiful, the powerful, if I would hide that in a sense of memorization, keeping it in my mind, that will keep me from acting stupid and acting out sin. It will keep you from sinning if you could just replace those thoughts with truth, replace those lies with truth. Philippians 4, 8. Now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true, what is honorable, and right, and pure, and lovely, and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Once again, we're illustrated from Paul that our thought life is a choice. I get to choose what I think about. And therefore, I'm not going to think about, I'm going to fix my thoughts. I love that word there because it's, it's got a twofold meaning that are both powerful. I fix as in I'm throwing an anchor, I'm secure, I'm focused in, I'm fixing on a place, I'm fixing on a thought, I'm fixing on what is true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, and admirable, excellent and worthy of praise. I'm fixing. But I love that, that word as well because I believe it also illustrates that if I have a broken thought, how do I fix it? I fix it by not resisting it but I replace it. I fix my thoughts on what is amazing, what is good and worthy of praise. See, we need to speak to ourselves more than we listen to ourselves. We need to speak to ourselves more than we listen to ourselves. There's foreign stuff that is we've let entered by our circumstances and we need to start speaking and thinking God's word, his truth. That's why it says it's powerful, it's living and it's active, sharper than a two-edged sword. It divides soul, spirit and, and joint, bone and marrow. It divides these things. It's powerful. Let me illustrate this finally. So what is true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, and admirable, excellent and worthy of praise? 
those things don't describe a thing to me. They describe a person, and his name is Jesus, who is the only one who is true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, admirable. Think about things that are excellent, worthy of praise. That's Jesus. I believe it's saying we need to fix our thought life. Just as we fix our focus, we fix our thoughts on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, of who we are. And we fix our, our thoughts on Jesus, the word, the truth, the scripture. That's why during this time, we believe as your pastors that it's a divine opportunity that you can get into God's word in such a new and a powerful and radical life-changing way. That you start to soak in the truth about God, the things that are true, honorable, right, and pure, worthy of praise. You soak those things in. It's not just going to change how you feel, but it's going to change how you act. If you are anxious during this time, what are you thinking about? What are you choosing to let rule in your thought life? If you're angry at things, if you're worried, if you're, if you're struggling with lust during this time or sinful desires, if because of your scrolling so much you're always comparing people and therefore have a horrible self-view, what are you thinking about? Not what are you thinking what are you thinking about? What have you chosen to put on that throne of your mind? I pray that after this, I'm going to pray over you that you would take a moment and think about what you're thinking about. And if there's a specific thing you've been struggling with, I guarantee you the Holy Spirit speaking to you right now. You know exactly what it is. And you are going to take a moment and know the verse or either you can Google the verse that is specifically for you. But I want you to start speaking and thinking about the promise that God is speaking to your exact situation, your exact action, your exact feeling, and your exact thought. Thank you, Jesus, that you came and died and gave us the power by your Holy Spirit to choose you. To choose to think about you, Jesus. And we know and we proclaim right now where everybody is sitting, standing, watching this video, that that truth will set them free. It'll set them free from anxiety. It'll set them free from anger, from lust, from acting out in certain ways. We thank you, Jesus, that you're with us. That we can think of you and that's a life changing. We thank you for this precious word. The word of God. The inspired word that, that isn't dead. That's not just pages or not words on a page. But it, it divides and comes into our hearts and our thoughts. And it changes everything. I pray that we would start thinking of these things like the psalmist said. That we would truly hide your truth in our thoughts, in our hearts. And we know, God, it will change everything for us. Would we take advantage of this time that we have to really get to know the truth and get to know you? Not just around us, but in our thoughts. We pray to Jesus in your holy and mighty name. Amen. We love you. We'll see you soon.